says Nelson Peltz insists again his fight with Disney is about the board, not Bob Iger, but it's a fine line. So um what so so what's going on right 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 now? It's like when when is the vote? Did it happen already? No, no, no. It's next week. But there were some oh, I sure. post, if you look at the spreadsheet, I um there's also another article there that says there was leaked uh data recently that I, I'm not sure if Wall Street was the one who got it first, but suddenly Peltz is now winning in the votation. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, All right. it, it, it's it's a it's gonna be spicy next week for Disney. Because like let's oh. assume Peltz I'm actually curious. If Peltz wins, let's let's say it optimistic optimistically speaking, if Peltz wins, like will Bob Iger like right right this article says I I, don't, I have no ill will to Bob like we just want to help him when we get when we get our seat on the board. Will Bob Iger leave or will he stay to recover his image? That's the part I'm curious about. It's like or is his ego that fat and big? No, I I, I lost the Peltz, so I'll just leave. I, I I don't know what's what's what dire, what direction he's gonna take if assuming Peltz wins. So it's gonna be exciting if he does really win. Suddenly, yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, Nelson Peltz said today that his bitter proxy fight with Disney is not about Mr. Iger, nor is about it a referendum, but his leadership. Even as CNBC reported that his firm Tryon is it Tryon? I'm uh, I'm not sure how to say it. Tryon Partners has withheld votes from the CEO, who is also a board nominee. Tryon didn't respond to a request for comments, but the firm clearly feels it needs to walk a fine line between attacking Disney's board, but not its rather popular CEO. Publicly, Tryon has been aggressively lobbying shareholders to withhold votes only from Disney board nominees Michael Froman and Maria Elena uh, Lagomasio and back Peltz and former Disney executive Jay Rasulo instead. The board has 12 members, which will be the nominees who wind up with the most votes. Uh, voting uh, is ongoing and tally will be unveiled at the company's annual meeting April 3rd. Damn, that's Wednesday. That's really, yeah, that's really, really it's soon. Gonna, yeah. But a, a lot of institutions have, I, I've been watching a lot of WDW Pro this week. A lot of firms have begun siding with uh, Pelts. They finally, <laughs> finally. How long did it take them for to, to open their eyes to see like if Disney has a shot of going back to profitability and going back to the way, a family friendly entertainment company? It, it's Pelts. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's going to be Pelts, not not Iger. All right. Let's see Pelts flurry of communications to shareholders have mostly con uh, focused on what it calls weak and inadequate accountability provided by the board, especially regarding succession. Influential proxy advisory firm ISS last week recommended shareholders support Peltz, but not Rasulo for the board and withhold votes from uh, Lagomazi, uh, Lagomazino, who is also cite, uh, citing succession. Uh, Disney says Peltz and Rasulo have nothing to offer strate uh, strategically and their presence on the board would be detrimental. Iger has received support from uh, luminaries and entertainment and finance from George Lucas to Lawrence Powell jobs to Jamie Dimon or Demon? Jamie da Jamie Dimon. <laughs> okay, that's Jamie not Dimon. Who's that? CEO of J.P. Morgan. That's why I know. Oh, that's, that's damn! Why I, that's why I know. It's not surprising. I know how he talks when he's in the media. So, chat for those who don't know, my first job is J.P. Morgan. That's why I'm familiar with Jamie Dimon. Anyway, he's uh, yeah. I'm not a fan of him. <laughs> Suffice to say, I'm not a fan of him. Oh, so basically, like J.P. Morgan, Chase, Vanguard, uh, State yeah. Street, BlackRock. Uh, man, all of the, these are the, uh, tied in together, man. Yeah, though Valiant is Valiant made a video saying BlackRock and Vanguard are beginning to waver on their ESG stance. So let's hope that bears fruit or it actually comes true. Valiant has been saying that. So and it's Valiant. I'm sure he, he he did the deep dive already. And he's a he's a legit financial analyst. So I believe him. All right. And the current board received support by Glass Lewis, another big proxy advisory firm. Quote, in this election contest, Disney has emphasized that Mr. Iger is admired and respected, which we do not doubt. Brian supports Mr. Iger as a candidate for the board and as CEO. Tryon said 
in its statement today, CNBC, however, which cited sources who monitor the situation saying that Tryon has voted to withhold support for Iger. While that would not be surprising, it just it is just not that, uh, sorry, what the firm is urging other shareholders to do. Tryon is voting its own shares as well as those who ally the former Marvel executive Ike Perlmutter, uh, together repping about $3.5 billion worth of uh, common stock. Uh, Disney says Perlmutter, who was, so he's out of the company a year ago, has personal grudge against Iger. <laughs> <laughs> so the fuck uh, That's funny. Get him out. Just get him yeah. out. Uh, <laughs> just, just get Iger out, man. Like, like the fact that like, he basically fired the key came back and they fired uh Chapek on a Sunday. It's like wow. In the middle of the night, wow. yep. yeah. the night it's like you're you're fired. Never... Give back... <laughs> yeah, give me back my restroom with, 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 with the shower in it. He, even when he uh, quote unquote no, give me give it back. He never left. He, he never yeah, I was gonna yeah, say he, 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 he never he never he never gave it. He never gave it to Chapek. No, he, uh, because he, he knew Chapek because he knew that he was gonna come back. Yeah, yep. he made Chapek the patsy for the lockdowns. They knew the lockdowns were coming. They knew it was going to be three. Well, they probably didn't know it was going to be three years of hell. But he wanted someone else to be the head of Disney when you know you close down all the theaters and you shut down all productions and they're not making a fucking dime. They just lo- they start losing money. He didn't want his name on that, so he put Chapek in charge. But he always planned to come back because eventually one day the lockdowns are going to lift and we're going to start making movies again. And when they do. I want to be back on at the top of that thing. So, which, yeah. which, which we can argue now is his biggest miscalculation. <laughs> he, he, he should have just probably let Chapek continue if he want if he wanted this reputation to remain clean. Should we say it would have been well, the more all, conservative all, all, political. All, all move. these uh, these manager types, the manager class. Uh, these are the same people in charge of the WEF, the ESG people, the Black Rocks, the JP Morgan. They think that they can predict the future. They think that they can steer people in the quote unquote right direction. And that's the direction they say. So Um, they think they're playing chess, but imagine if the chess pieces didn't actually stay where you put them. Imagine if the chess pieces could actually move on their own. That's what they're dealing with. And anytime any of these like managers, whether it's a government like uh, Mao's China or Stalin's Russia, or if it's a corporation like BlackRock or Vanguard, you think you're going to be able to steer the future and you think you're going to be able to be in charge of it. The problem is, as you move the chess pieces, the chess pieces are us. And we don't always fucking do what we're told. I know. Shocking. And some of us just tell you to go fuck yourself. And so you move the knight to this position and the knight just says, no, I'm going to go over here. In fact, I'm going to step off the board. I don't want nothing to do with this anymore. Where the fuck did my knight go? I thought we had we had plans for these knights and pawns, and they just fucked off and got off this board, and now we don't have them. And mm-hmm. here come the investors. Where's my profits? You said I'd have profits. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm happy I'm happy to watch this happen. But it's just again, everyone's pulling Pikachu face. Oh, I I didn't know this was gonna. I didn't know this. Yeah. Was gonna it, yeah. The most bizarre <laughs> thing. It took this long. For this to finally man, it took more over a decade for this to happen. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's continue. Um, all right. Pelts, including his uh, silent ally Perlmutter, would uh, harm Disney and jeopardize our strategic transformation. Disney said in a filing today, there have been hundreds of filings in recent months, including from another investment firm, Blackwell's Capital, which is anti Pelts but has three of its own nominees on the board. A trying group rep pointed to the firm's press release today said uh, that the fact that Disney spends so much time and ink defending Mr. Iger while saying almost nothing about the two director candidates whose re-election try-on is challenging is both troubling and telling. This campaign is not about Bob, uh, sorry, Mr. Iger, nor is it about referendum on his leadership. And in all events, Disney is and must be more than just one person, especially one whose contract expires in less than two short years. Um, Disney used to be about one person's vision, which is Walt's vision. And now it's just basically uh, Disney in name only. Everything else is just about money and it's about not like, keeping the magic and uh, the spirit of Disney and his legacy alive. And it's all about like what we can do now. If Nelson Peltz comes in and and takes over, 
the fact that like I'm not sure how much house cleaning he's gonna do. It, it, yeah, like, he still like him getting the seat is just the beginning. Like he still needs. Yeah, as Dan mentioned, or oh, sorry, Ogami, he mentioned. Um, there's still everyone else at the bottom. Everyone mm-hmm. else at the bottom, right? It's like these are all DEI driven people. So just he's still gonna face a lot of opposition apart from Bob, Bob's yes men board of directors. There's also middle management, the everyone else, everyone who's D, DEI infected. So we can only see what how much influence can um Nelson and all the other institutional investors that sided with him, how much influence can how much can they steer the ship to bring this D back to its correct uh to the right path yeah all right let's see let's finish this off but this election is a board election and the question before shareholder is who should serve on the board helping the company on behalf of the shareholders choosing between these slates and voting for change versus more of the same is really what the election is about yeah i believe as of right now at least the past four years disney what disney has not made a lot of money like did they ever make a billion dollars like last year and a year before not really huh uh they've mostly lost gotten money. yeah they've lost yeah. money every quarter in fact the report is every quarter they lost close to a billion dollars per quarter a quarter is three months so yeah they they, they have been losing because they put out crap product Again, they were pro lockdown, so they were all about you know shutting down everything. Uh, and you know, to be fair, everyone at the top corporations were. Uh, but then they decided to pick that fight, and they decided to you know virtue signal. And we always have that video of the head of children's programming's my not at all secret gay agenda. So that stuck with people, and mm-hmm. I don't think that was an accident. You know, they they speak with such confidence because they believe. They believe they're on the right side. Again, it's a cult. It's a DIE cult. Uh, and they follow all the religious patterns that we've seen a million times in the past. Uh, they just don't have a God per se. Their God is DIE. Their God is diversity, inclusion, equity. They have three, right? And that's how they revere it. And if you speak against them, you're a heretic. Burn the heretic. Purge them. And that's why they use words like that. Purge them. That's what that BBC NPC said. And so Mm -hmm. then that's what they want. And again, the investors, the global investors, they might think they're on the right path, too. But really, at the end of the day, they're they're about making money. And and what they were told is that the modern audience is out there. It's the young people. And this is what they're into. They're into this diversity, inclusion and equity. So if you want to make money going forward, the old people, they're going to die. And they they're not the ones you appeal to. You appeal to the new generation the young hip generation. And of course they're like, yeah, great. That sounds good. Let's do it. Problem is they're not making any money because that modern audience doesn't exist. There's plenty of young people out there. It turns out that they don't give a shit about any of this stuff. None of it. So now you had, now not only did you, it's one thing if a company goes and tries to get new customers, but if you go out and get new customers and tell your old customers to fuck off, the old customer is going to fuck off. And if you don't find new customers, you're screwed. And that's what's happening right now. So yep. it's th- they did this to themselves. Yep. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. uh, let's see what's going to happen, man. In yeah, a couple ne- of days, ne- we'll see. Yeah. Ne- next week is going to be big about Disney stuff for sure. The power struggle is about to go on fire next week. Yeah. Well, I, I, keep, I keep bringing up the, the it's the lesson of new Coke. New. Uh, we brought this up last time. The new Coke and old Coke thing. All right. New Coke did learn. Because when they started losing their customers because they made new Coke, they corrected very quickly because they wanted their they wanted to keep their customers. They wanted more customers, but they wanted to keep the ones they had. So they released while new Coke was still on the shelves, they brought back Coke Classic to keep their Mm -hmm. old customers happy. And eventually, since no one bought new Coke, Coke Classic was what stayed on the shelves and they just named it Coke again, a Coke original flavor. Right. They adapted very quickly because they saw that their customers were responding. But that's because they valued the people buying their sugar water, right? These guys don't value the customer. They want to, they're telling the old customers, go fuck yourself. They're not going to give us Disney Classic. They're not going to give it, they'll give us Disney Classic, but they'll put a disclaimer on it. This was made in a different time and it's very problematic and it might be triggering, (laughs) blah, blah, blah. 
They're yeah. apologizing yeah. preemptively for the stuff that they made, which at the time is a treasure and is still a treasure to this day. They don't care about the old customer. They want the new customer. They're telling the old customer to go away. So the old customers are going away, and the new customers don't give a fuck. So yes, mm -hmm. good. The market is speaking to you loud and clear, and you're not listening. So guess what happens? Yeah. They're basically like, exactly. how can we put Taylor Taylor Swift in our movies? They're, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna go back to the DSP <laughs> people, the vet, the Black Rocks, the Vanguards, and JP Morgan and say, oh no, 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 don't worry. We we definitely will write this, give us more money, invest in the future of Disney. And you know, they might get it. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.